like to welcome everybody to Tuesday class. Uh, listen, uh, you surpassed what I thought would come, and I want to thank you for being here, and I want us all be careful. Uh, I can't speak when I wear a mask, but I want you to know I'd have one on if I'm sitting down. Um, and I'd take it off singing. I, I can't do that. Anyway, I, I, you don't know how thrilled I am to see you. Well, we're glad you're here, Kathy. It's always good to see you. <laughs> um, we'll talk about <clears throat> the sick and who we need to pray for in a few moments. Uh, Anthony's going to lead us in a couple of songs. Eight seventy four. Eight seventy four. Walking alone at Eve. All right. Walking alone at Eve and viewing the skies afar. Bidding the darkness come to welcome each silver star. I have a great delight in the wonderful scenes above. God in His power and might is showing His truth and love. Oh, for a home with God, a place in His courts to rest. Sure in a safe abode with Jesus and the blessed. Rest for a weary soul, once redeemed by the Savior's love. Where I'll be pure and whole, and live with my God above. Sitting alone at eve, and dreaming the hours away. Watching the shadows falling, now at the close of day, God in His mercy comes with His word He is drawing near. Spreading love and truth around me in every way. Oh, for a home with God, a place in His courts to rest. Sure in the safe abode with Jesus and the blessed. Rest for a weary soul once redeemed by the Savior's love. Where I'll be pure and whole and live with my God above. Closing my eyes at eve and thinking of heaven's grace. Longing to see my Lord, yes, meeting him face to face. Trusting him as my all, wheresoever my footsteps roam. Pleading with him to guide me on to the Spirit's home. Oh, for a home with God, a place in His courts to rest. Sure in the safe abode with Jesus and the blessed. Rest for a weary soul once redeemed by the Savior's love. Where I'll be pure and whole and live with my God above. Amen. That sounds amazing. 535. One more song. 535. The Glory Land Way. 535. Let's sing. I'm in the way, the bright and shiny way. I'm in the glory land way. 
Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer for I'm in the glory land way. List to the call, the gospel call today. Get in the glory land way. Wanderers come home, oh, hasten to obey, for I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Amen. Listen, I, I don't know, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, I really appreciate Anthony helping us out. He's recording the class for you at home, and he just led the singing, and we appreciate him so much. We all love him, don't we? Amen. <clears throat> we're in James chapter five. James chapter 5, the reason we're at chapter 5 is I hope you've been following along with me on the recordings. We went through every chapter of James and we stopped at chapter 5 for today. And that's what we have is James chapter 5 today. Uh, James is a wonderful book. I, yeah. and, and listen, uh, let me tell you again, I want to tell you one more time before we talk about some other things, our sick and everything. I, I, I want you to know it's really good to be here, isn't it? Amen. And, and we want to be safe. And I want you to be safe. I want you to feel safe. <coughs> but listen, you don't know how glad I know how glad I am, how happy it makes me to see you I just and there's and there's many here that I miss, and I'm so glad to see you. Let's talk about our sick, those we need to remember in our prayers. First of all, uh, let's remember Nancy Armstrong, uh, the loss of Gerald. And let's remember Purcell and his family, the loss of his brother, D.T. But also, he has another concern. He has a concern for his nephew, Damien, who has the virus. So pray for that family. Yeah. And uh, if we can do anything for you, Purcell, please let us know. And I, I want to ask you a question. Is that your last brother or sister? In, okay, I'll be, I, I won't, I, 
well, I might not be the same as you. There's only two of us left of seven, and I'm counting on me going, him going first. <laughs> yeah, so, so <laughs> that's really not fair, is it? I, but I, I understand how you feel. It, and what, <laughs> well, you know what I mean. I was talking to him like I was saying, man, I, I'm, my brother's going to gonna die before me, but I, we don't know that. Only, only God knows. That's what I'm trying to to get it. I'm trying to get out of that. I'm trying to dig my way out and I would appreciate you would help me. <laughs> we love you, Purcell. Amen. Um, also, since we have came back and we're back in class again, I got to say this. Look at Nancy over there. Who do we miss? Yep. Miss Harrison. Do you know how to make chili, Nancy? Did, were you really the one making the chili? No. He was making it. I wonder if you could study up on it. And, <laughs> I, I'm, we really miss him, Nancy. We really miss him. Um, we need to pray continually for Faith Beeman, pray for her recovery. Uh, she is making progress and we want her to make progress day in and day out. So let's pray for, for Faith. Also, Terry Barrett was scheduled to have a, a kidney stone surgery today, but it has been postponed, I think, for at least two weeks. He, he's got 10 days worth of a medicine to take. He has a kidney infection. So he'll have to do that to go through that series of medication and then uh, he will have that surgery. Also, Sherry Bays' cousin Bud, who had the farm accident and was in terrible shape, he's out of the hospital, he's at home, but Sherry wants you to know that it's a long process in his recovery. So be sure and pray for him. Bobby Barm is having another back surgery. Is this number three? Okay. This will be the third one. Uh, it is scheduled for the 13th, so please pray for, for Bobby uh, and, his and his surgery. And Carol, if there's anything we can do to support you, to help you, anything, you let us know, okay? Uh, little Colby Watson. <laughs> Little Colby Watson, uh, uh, Brandon's little boy, not the littlest one, but the next one. He, I don't know how he broke his arm. Was it on a trampoline? I don't know. I should have asked Anthony. I think they said that they were at a birthday party at a trampoline. Uh -huh. you know, oh, okay, party. yeah. And I believe that's what it is. Okay. Any, uh, that... Uh, that required surgery. He had to have surgery. Uh, it, it, but uh, the way it was explained to me, it wasn't, it wasn't going to open anything up. He was going to put screws from the outside, but I don't know if that's true. Okay, so uh, pray for little Colby and pray for that family. Um, Mildred Wooten wanted me to know that she wanted you to know that she's recovering from eye surgery. She wanted to be here today, but uh, she had eye surgery. She's having to put this medication in her eyes. Uh, continue to pray for Anita Hawkins. And Helen Strange is out of the hospital. I don't know about you, but I didn't know she went in. So we're glad she's out. We're glad you're out, Helen. And we want you to continue to get well. <laughs> Uh, Ruth Ann Watson, Rita Domini, we need to continue to pray for. Tanya Rowden, they wanted to be here today, but uh, she could not. Uh, she is scheduled for a heart cath, and I wish I could remember what she told me. I think she said next week. I'm not sure on that. So. Keep her in your prayers. We pray that she'll continue to lead to her health will continue to improve. She'll be back with us. We miss her and Larry. Darlene, wasn't that good seeing her? It was really good to see her at church. And 
we all wish her the best. We want her to get well so she can take charge of Daryl again. Uh, we <laughs> uh, So, darling, you get well. Uh, Innocencio Romero, she had an amputation. Uh, she was in the hospital out here. She went home, and then she had a setback. They took her to Baylor Hospital, and now they have brought her back to Corsicana. So she's in a, a struggle trying to recover. So remember her in your prayers. Anybody else that we need to remember? Yes, ma'am. My mother is having a <coughs> diabetic, and she's got a... Uh, your mother? Yes. Uh, your mother's having an MRI. Josie, what's her name? Adelia. A-D-E-L-I-A. A-D-E-L-I-A. Adelia. Taurus. T-O-R-R-E-S. C-O. T. Taurus. Oh, Taurus. Okay. It's in Taurus. I know how to spell that. <laughs> Once I knew it was a T. <laughs> And that's uh, Christy. Christy Barham. She's doing okay, but it's been a long process. Christy, what was her last name? Uh, Barham. Oh, it's her daughter-in-law. I know why. It's her daughter-in-law, <laughs> the one that mows the yard all the time. <laughs> She's recovering from so shoulder surgery. Yes. Boy, don't try to say that too fast. That's <laughs> Don't make fun of me. <laughs> you did it, did you? Remember, Jimmy, he's having his cyst removed and then having to have carpal tunnel. Okay, Jimmy Horn. He's doing that Thursday. Is going to have a uh, cyst removed. What else we have? Cyst removed. Oh, okay. All right, anybody else we need to remember? I'm going to ask uh, Adon if he come up here and say the prayer for everybody at home watching. And us. Box, B-O-X? Okay. okay. Where are they? They're going to Okay. All right. Let's pray. Our God and glorious Father, we come to Thee on uh, bended knee, Father. We, we praise You. We worship You. We love You. We thank You. We are, uh, are so indebted, Father, for the... Uh, love that you've shown for us, the, the grace that's been extended beyond uh, compare. Father, the creation you provided for us and, and all of the things, Father, that you've uh, done for us. We're too many to mention, but we're thankful, Father, for uh, all and acknowledge you as the authority, as our authority, Father. And we pray that we might uh, live our lives as if we recognize that authority and as, as, as if we uh, love you uh, to the best of our ability and uh, serve you to the best uh, that we can do. Father, we pray uh, this morning for, for many people, but we also pray for our country. We pray that um, uh, a country that was founded supposedly on uh, Christian principles uh, that's drifted far from that uh, in so many areas, Father, and we, we uh, certainly uh, recognize it's not a perfect country and there are many flaws, Father, but we're thankful for what you have provided for us, and we pray that we might be an influence um, in this country for good, that we might be the examples, that we might show the love for uh, all men that you show. And we pray, Father, that we might be uh, respectful and uh, supportive 
of all of those, Father, that, that uh, are part of your creation. We're thankful, Father, again, and we pray for those that uh, are in law enforcement. We pray for our military. We pray for our first responders, Father, all of those that make this country secure and better. Thank you, Father, for uh, Jesus and for that sacrifice that uh, was given for us. Father, we want to remember this morning uh, some of our uh, family that have lost loved ones, uh, Nancy and her loss of her husband, Gerald, and we know that was a long uh, illness, Father, that she um, supported him so much during that time, and it was um, very tough, uh, Father, at the end where um, the uh, virus had limited uh, some of the things and some of the ways that they could be around each other. And we're, we pray, Father, that she will turn to you, that she will uh, know that we love her and that she will uh, be strengthened. And as she uh, grows and, and recovers uh, from that loss, Father, help us to be examples and help us to be an encouragement to her. Father, we want to remember our brother Purcell who lost his brother, uh, DT. And we know, Father, that... Uh, uh, he is uh, struggling with that loss and has um, many things around that that he's dealing with. And we pray, Father, for strength for him. We pray that we might be an encouragement to him, that we might be the, um, those that would help him realize that he's loved and that uh, we're supporting him in, uh, in this time of loss. Father, we want to remember uh, others that uh, uh, are struggling or uh, recovering from um, health issues and we want to mention them this morning father faith beeman who continues father to improve and we pray that that might continue that she might uh, continue to be better that she might continue to regain capabilities and function that helps her to be um, what uh, the best that she can be father and we're thankful for that we're thankful for uh, christy and brian uh, as they work with her and as they uh, are, are that support system that has helped her to, to improve as much as she's been able to. Father, we want to remember Terry Barrett who has uh, uh, got an upcoming surgery and is fighting an infection at this point. We pray that he might recover soon and that he might uh, have a successful surgery. Um, we also want to remember uh, Sherry Bay's cousin Bud who's recovering from uh, two broken hips and a uh, tractor accident. And we ask that uh, he might continue to recover uh, from that, uh, that uh, accident. We also want to remember Damien uh, Purcell's nephew who has uh, COVID-19. And, and I think, Father, in the family, there's other instances of that infection or of that virus, and we pray for them as well. Uh, we want to remember our brother Bobby as he has a, uh, a scheduled surgery. We pray for the surgeons. We pray for... Uh, the nurses, the support team that's going to help Bobby with that surgery, and we pray that he might recover uh, quickly and completely. Father, we also want to remember uh, Colby Watson, who's coming home today uh, and has a recovery from a broken arm. We pray uh, that that might go well and, and that he might be fully healed uh, through uh, the uh, medical procedures that he's had. Pray for um, uh, that family uh, as they uh, support Colby and, and uh, as they uh, struggle with that uh, change in their lifestyle, uh, at least temporarily. Father, we're thankful for uh, Mildred Wooten and her faithfulness, and we thank you, Father, that uh, she's been such a strong example to so many of us in her uh, faithful attendance and her desire to serve you and to be with her brothers and sisters. And we know she's recovering from an eye surgery. We pray that that goes well and that she recovers quickly. We also want to remember uh, Adelia Torres um, and, and her uh, struggles, and we pray that she might uh, have a quicker recovery, that she might uh, be uh, uh, back to her health, and that those that are uh, working with her and for her might be able to do those things that would encourage that. We also want to remember Christy Barham uh, as she's recovering from a series of, of shoulder um, uh, incidents and ac uh, surgeries maybe and, and uh, just recovering. I'm sure there's some physical therapy, Father, that, that's ongoing. We pray that that might be successful, that she might uh, regain full use and, and uh, strength in that uh, shoulder area. We pray, Father, for that, and we're thankful for the recovery she's had so far. And we know our brother Jimmy is uh, undergoing a, a surgery, upcoming surgery um, in his hand and wrist, and we pray, Father, that 
that uh, those that are uh, working on that surgery that are performing that might be successful, that they might uh, repair those things that are needed and that, that he might have a full and quick recovery. Father, we also want to remember others that are having health issues, Anita Hawkins, Helen Strange, Ruth Ann Watson, Rita Dominey, Tanya Rowden, and Darlene Olson. We're thankful, Father, that several of these have been able to be back with us occasionally. We're thankful for that, Father, we can pray that they might continue to uh, improve and might be able to uh, be uh, back with us soon. Uh, we also want to remember our sister Romero, who's uh, still in the hospital in Corsicana, and recovering from a uh, leg amputation. And we, Father, we know that uh, uh, with complications that that's, that's a, a struggle for her. We pray that she might uh, continue to keep, uh, remain faithful, that she might continue to remain encouraged by uh, your love for her and, and our concern for her. Father, help us to remember those that are in uh, the nursing homes and shut-ins during this time of, of limited visits and, and uh, inability to, to maybe make as much contact as we would like to um, that may be discouraging for those folks. And it's certainly discouraging, Father, for us that we can't see them and we can't be with them and we can't um, enjoy them, Father. And we pray that you would encourage them. We pray that they might turn to your word for encouragement during this time, that they might uh, know that uh, you love them and that, uh, that their brothers and sisters love them as well. Father, we uh, love you. We're thankful for all the blessings that you provide for us. We know that we are a blessed, truly a blessed people. And we pray, Father, that as we uh, work to spread your word throughout this community and, uh, and around the world, Father, that, that we might say those things, that we might do those things, that we might be the influence, that we might be the example that others would see that might uh, encourage them to want to know more about you. And Father, help us to be uh, ready and, and able to share the love that we have and the, that we enjoy, Father, through you and the sacrifice uh, that was made for our sins through your son, Jesus. It's in his precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Boy, there is nothing better than have the elders pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we'll see that in James chapter 5. Uh, just nothing better. So we're in James chapter 5 in verses 1 through 6. In verses 1 through 6, he cautions those who are wealthy, those who are rich, uh, that riches, if that's the only focus we have, if we just focus completely on, on wealth and stuff and things, if that's the focus of our life, all of that's only temporary. We can't take it with us. Yeah. It will not last. And we're going to see that. And then he talks about how some that are rich have, 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 uh, have gotten their riches by taking advantage of others. That's how they have, that's how they prospered. And so he w is going to talk to them and he's telling them right here that things are going to be different in eternity. <laughs> You're going to have to pay the price for that. And, and uh, by the way, if you have a statement, you want, you want to say something, you want to raise your hand, let me know. Uh, verse 1. Come now, you rich, weep. And how? For your miseries are, which are coming upon you. Um, the Word of God doesn't condemn wealth, does it? It's no, it does, he doesn't condemn wealth. Uh, we are to try to be successful in this life. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and everything we get, if we have it, He gave to us, didn't, didn't He, Nancy? Thank you. Yeah. Um, Nancy said for those of you at home that if we have wealth it's a blessing from God he, he gave that to us if we didn't earn it dishonestly and right here he's talking about three things that God is concerned with he, he's not condemning wealth he's concerned about three ways we use that wealth or how we gain that wealth first is how did we get our wealth? 
How did we get it? Yeah, it's a blessing, and, and we must get it honestly. That's what he wants us to know. We have to get it honestly. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28, if you want to flip over there, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 28, Ephesians 4, 28 says, He who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor, performing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with who? Those who need it. The second way that God's concerned about our wealth is we have to give a portion of that to who? To God. We have to, he, he expects that from us. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2, on the first day of the week, we're to, each of you is to put aside, he says, and save, so that um, as we have prospered, so that when collect, no collections are required to be made by with me, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2, we're to give of our means as we've been prospered. And then we must support our family, don't we? We have to support that family. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 8 says, if we don't support our families, he says, but if anyone does not provide for his own, he's especially to those of his household, he is denied the faith and is worse than what? An unbeliever. Uh, we also have to pay our taxes. Romans 13, verse 5 through 7. We also must help others. Ephesians 4, 28. Those in need. Uh, I, I am... You know, I think of this. and I think of Don saying a prayer. And I think of talking to Priscilla earlier. We were... And, we're really lucky to have such godly men, aren't we, as elders? We're not lucky, we're yeah, we're, I think you better show us the words. We're blessed because everything they are concerned with, including us meeting together, they're concerned about that, and 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 they're concerned about each and every one of our souls, and they're concerned about taking care of the, those in need. And we appreciate them for that. Amen. And then the third thing God expects us of our wealth is our attitude toward our wealth. And we know that there's one way, and you know, let me stop for a second. We say to ourselves sometimes, well, <laughs> I'm not wealthy. <laughs> you know, we say that to ourselves. I'm not rich, I'm not wealthy. But if you consider the world as a whole, if you just go to Mexico, <laughs> what makes you that down there? Money, wealth, stuff and things, cars, everything we have, many people down there do not have. I'll never forget my sons went on a mission trip to El Salvador, and they went in these huts that was supposed to be a house about the size and it wasn't even, it's about this size. Dirt floor. But you know what? We may not be wealthy. We may not have money. But we are truly rich if we're what? The blessings of God. The blessings of God and if we're a child of His and we're laying up treasures in heaven. So... One way to think about that is you can't number no amount of money that can buy your way into heaven. Yeah. If you, if you want to compare the richest to the rich, yeah. we're we're better off than them because we have an avenue. Yes, we do. To get to heaven. And the rich man cannot buy his way there. No, matter how, no matter how much yeah. money he wants to try to use to buy his way to heaven, he yeah. cannot. Uh thank you, Don. Uh so the love of the money Love of money is the wrong attitude. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. 1 Timothy 6, verse 9 and 10. 1 Timothy 6, verse 9 says, But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare, and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. 
And we know this part. For the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil because you've made it your focus in life. And some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. That's the truth, isn't it? Solid truth from God. And so we have to realize that we're, the money that we have, God has blessed us with, and, and we're to be good stewards of what He's given us. Yeah. So the rich in these verses, He's showing us the danger that happens. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever read articles like me about people who won the lottery and they didn't have anything and then they were worse off in five years than they were ever, you know. It, it's where their focus was. They didn't know that how to use it, how to take care of it. But that, that doesn't have anything to do with this, but it's just some uh, 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 yeah, application. I think, Tim, uh, this verse that we just read uh, in First uh, Timothy, verse 9, I think uh, a lot of people, that is verse 10, a lot of people take that out of context, some, uh, sort of, and believe that you know, rich people can't go to heaven. Oh yeah, well, some that's people think that. That's not true. Uh, that's not what this verse says. No. But a lot of people look at it that way. Yeah. And, uh, a, a rich person has just as much opportunity yeah. to yeah. go to heaven as anyone. Yeah. And it's just because of these things that we're talking about. Yeah. That they don't put that first. Yeah. But a wealthy person can go just as easy. He surely, certainly can, because that his focus is on God, isn't it? Yeah. instead of uh, the blessings that he received from God. Thank you, Jim. Uh, he goes on in this verse, uh, said, uh, he shows us the danger of putting our trust in, in the wrong treasure. And that's what Jim was saying. We can put our trust in the wrong treasure. It, it's the wrong focus of our life. And look what he says in verse, uh, uh, verse 1. Miseries coming upon you refers to what? Do you think if you if your focus is not on God and you don't realize the blessings that you got because you think you did it, what is he talking about? The misery is coming upon you. Do you think he's talking about the eternal punishment if you lost your focus to God and, and you've turned your back on Him and you've looking for the world and what you can get and stuff and things and, and, and completely out of focus with God? Yeah, you're in trouble. The miseries are coming upon you. Another part of that too is they may not realize and they have all this money Money cannot buy you happiness no matter what. No matter what. And they want to try with it, don't they? They, they think yeah. they can, but you just can't. Yeah. Money can't buy happiness. Yeah. Salvation yeah. or nothing. Yeah. Or peace. Peace. Yeah, there you go, yeah. folks. You're laying there tonight, worried about if he's going to lose all the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're a wreck, aren't you? <laughs> Verse 2 and 3. Verse 2 and... Oh, yes, sir. I'm just going to say, uh, I, I think also wealth brings access to temptations that maybe we don't all have. I'm, yeah. I, I don't have the temptation of taking my yacht to Bermuda on Sunday. No. <laughs> no. To, to I, not go to work. Yeah. And yeah. Just, that, yeah. yeah. But there's many temptations that yeah. we aren't of faith that aren't even considerations for us. Yeah. But for the rich, they aren't. They are. Yeah. And so there's that much more, that, that makes it that much, I think, that much more challenging. Satan so puts those kinds of temptations in front of folks that have that kind of ability to pay. Yeah. Um, that we don't have to suffer. No, so we don't not mean. Not only is it, is it, you know, all the other things we talked about, I think they have more temptations. Yes, they do. That's true. Thank you. Exactly. Verse 2 and 3. Your riches have rotted and your garments have become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted, and their rust will be a witness against you, 
and will consume your flesh like fire. It is in the last days that you have stored up your treasure. Now, I want you to look at this. The, the rich, he, he's referring to money and possessions and stuff and things like Don talked about. Uh, clothes in the first century, if you, what, was, what, what do you think that clothes represented in the first century? Wealth. Wealth, if it was nice clothes. It represented wealth. And moth-eaten means they what? Boy, you can just throw them away. You just throw them away. One time I had this suit I always wanted. Beverly let me get it. It's beautiful. Brown, little bright light stripe. Oh, man, I was GQ. And I loved that suit. I wore it one time. And I hung it in this area of an old closet we had. And I went back in there and had two holes in the coat and one in the pants. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, moth, yeah. So the moth eaten means it's, it's no longer any good. You might as well just throw them away. And so trusting, these people were, trusting in their riches instead of trusting in who? Almighty God. And, and they were, what kind of treasures are we to have? Temporary, Temporary ones. Temporary. Permanent blessings from God that, and, and living a life that we can have treasures yes. in heaven. Yeah. That's the only ones we're going to take with us, I guarantee. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we know also in this verse, a gold and silver doesn't, doesn't rust, does it? We know that. What's the point he's trying to make? If we know, he's using a, he, he's, I don't know how to exactly put this, but he's using a figure of speech. A gold and silver doesn't rust. It can be in the bottom of the ocean. It'll turn dark to silver, but it's still silver. So what in the world is he trying to bring to focus here for us? It, man, she says it's not going to do you in any good in, in the long run if that's where your heart is and if that's where you're trusting. What's another thing he's trying to get across? Think about it. It's temporary. It's temporary. There's something else. What does a wealthy man, I love the way Beverly puts it. <laughs> we talk about this. And she starts going with a rich, someone wealthy. Storing it, putting it up, being safe. They want to guard it. <laughs> they don't want to let it go, do they? Huh? I'm sorry if I embarrass you. We have a good time with this sometimes. And <laughs> so this is what he's talking about too. Everything y'all have said is correct. But he's also talking about those who have it and want more. And they don't want to lose it and they don't want to share it and they don't want to do anything with it but put it in their pockets or in their safe or, or put it up and gain more. Yes, Larry? Trouble with wealth, I think people who get really wealthy, uh -huh. after a while it stops being about money and becomes power. Yes, sir. And they want that power that comes with great wealth. Yes, sir. And they'll do anything to have it preserved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are. It is, isn't it? Politicians like that. It's meaningless to God. I'm sorry? It's meaningless to God. It's meaningless to God. James says, for those of you at home, James says it's meaningless to God. It doesn't mean nothing to God. Uh, that's kind of like skin color. Do you think God cares about black, white, green, or purple? No. No. What, what's he look at? The heart. That's what he wants. He don't even. That didn't even come into the equation. I think 
Well, of course, our most important treasures are in heaven. Yeah. But I think us poor people here on earth can still have treasures, yes, not sir. things that we can touch or put our hands on. But yeah. I look at our family, our yeah. kids, our grandkids, uh -huh. uh, you and I, these are uh, treasures uh, that mean a lot more to us than what our gold and silver uh, will ever mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they are treasures that we can have here yeah. on our earth yeah. uh, yeah. and still be, uh, still be good. That's right. Thank you, Jim. Good point. I guess you could sum it up by saying they're selfish. They're using it on themselves. They're hoarding it up. So it's a sin to have all this wealth and not help the poor. I mean, it's a sin. It was their duty to fill a man, Ephesians 4, verse 28. It's not wrong for a Christian to provide for our needs. We are supposed to do that. We're supposed to provide for our families and for those in need. But it is wrong for us not to help, not to do our part, because it displays our heart. Um, and you heard Jim, to, the priority of us is to lay up treasures in heaven. Verse 4. I wish my false teeth would stop Before whistling. That, just something that, that hits me between the eyes. Um, you know, we, we, we sometimes think of rich when we think of this. Mm -hmm. This is talking to us. Mm -hmm. We're rich. We, we are rich. We are rich. We are, yeah. we are the rich. This is who he's talking to. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there's richer people than us. But yeah. some people would consider the treasure to have a roof over your head. Yeah. Some people would consider a treasure to have sheets. To sleep yeah. On. Yeah. A, ca a carpet on the dirt floor. Or to transfer to yeah. the ground. That would be a treasure unimagined yeah. to some. So we yeah. do have treasures. Yes, we do. Here. And, and this, is, this is for us. Yes, it is. And it, it's not just those that are, we would consider wealthy. Yeah. But, but those of us who yeah. are wealthy, really, yeah. uh, if you consider the rest of the world, yeah. wealthy beyond uh, yeah. what most people. Most yeah. People are. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our yeah. probably considered well off. Yeah. We. The world. Yeah. That's why yeah. sometimes I think we have more uh, success reaching those that uh, are in countries that are very poor. Yeah. yeah. Because they don't have these other things. They don't have three TVs. To fall back on <laughs> these other things. Yeah. Things to layer distractions. Yeah. Us, yeah. To say, Yeah. Blessings, yeah. All the time. Yeah. And so anyway, that, that's just yeah. It, it's, and we are it's in danger good. if we don't focus on God because we have these things, and yeah. and someone who has nothing, who do they depend on? God. God. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Thank you. Verse four. Behold, the pay of the laborers who mowed your fields and which has been withheld by you, cries out against you, and the outcry of those who did the harvesting has reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. If I pronounce the word right. If, if, if I pronounced it right. I listened to the pronunciation 50 times at home, and I probably still didn't get it. So I'm going to tell you what it is. It means Lord of hosts. Lord of hosts. So it has reached the ears of what these, these the, the landowners have done to the laborers has reached the ears of who? The God of us all. The God of us all. The creation of the universe that we love. That we stand out and look at night and say to ourselves, how great they are. So he's the Lord of hosts. And, he, and here, this person may have increased their wealth by underpaying or even not paying their worker. And the worker also deserves a fair wage, but he also must do an honest day's work, shouldn't he? 
And paying an unfair wage is just wrong. It's as wrong as stealing. It's as wrong as stealing, robbing, embezzlement, on and on you could go. The cries of the underpaid workers has reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. Used here, there are only two places in the New Testament this word is used. Right here in Romans chapter 9 and verse 29. You know how many times it's used in the Old Testament? 282 times it's used. That word. This is the name of God who fought on the side of the Israelites in the Old Testament that was with them through every battle. Verse 5 and 6. You have lived luxuriously on earth and led a life of wanton pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in the day's day of slaughter. You have condemned and put to death the righteous man. He does not resist you. Now, there's two ways of looking at this verse. Now, first of all, the wealthy person that lives in luxury and self-indulgence, he's really fatted their hearts in the day of slaughter. What, what do you think he's talking about here? Anybody ever had a feedlot or, or knew someone who, who had feedlots? What do they do in them feedlots, little girl? They fatten them up. They fatten them up right up to the day they slaughter them and butcher them. So the rich live in this selfish life right down to the final judgment day. You have condemned and put to death the righteous man, he says in verse 6. This could refer to two things. It could refer to Jesus. It matches, doesn't it? It could refer to Jesus or in this context... Maybe a righteous man was killed by someone who was wealthy influencing the courts or maybe just plain and simple mockery of justice. Any good or poor man in James's day was treated this way. Who do you think by? By the, by the rich Jews, the wealthy Jews or anybody that was very wealthy like Don talked about or way earlier because that's where they're seeking. That's where they want. They want more stuff and things. Yes, Purcell? You're about to go. You're about there. Yeah. A man came to be naked. Yeah. He's going to leave Yeah. Yeah. But what you do have during that span of time, God holds you accountable. Yeah. For how you use it, how yeah. you react to it, and all. Yeah. And when the thing is for Christians to remember that I can get out of this verse to take it is when I cheat somebody, when I cheat somebody, hey, it gets to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to the judgment. When it comes back to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, when I cheat. Yeah. When I defy people. Yeah. When I do all those things against my neighbor, against my brother, my sisters, all of that is going to come back to me. Yeah. It's going to come back home, isn't it? It's going to come back home, and yeah. we got to get. That's right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yes. And, and we don't have to be doing something bad to them. We just don't think about them at all. Right. Yeah. We're, and when we are so blessed, we're not like God if we're not sharing our blessings. That's true. That's true. I wish that I could go on with you. Uh, I want to finish the whole chapter <laughs> quickly, but I, I, I just can't. We're going to have to pick it up at verse 7 next week. Uh, he's going to talk about being patient and strengthening your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. He's going to talk about if you're suffering, uh, then we have to pray. Uh, we are to sing praises to God. And then if anyone is sick, 
I want you to I want you to study this beginning at verse 13 and 14. If anyone is sick, he is to call for the elders. I want to hear from you next week how often we ought to do that. Should it be when we just have the sniffles just to be safe? <laughs> or should we use a little bit of discretion? Think about that and tell me if you think they, we even need to let them know. But I'm going to give you a hint. If I'm seriously ill and I may not live the next 20 minutes, She's going to call the elders for me. I, I want them there. I want them there. But anyway, that'll give you something to think about. And uh, we'll discuss that uh, next Tuesday. I'm thankful that you're all here. I'm thankful for those who tuned in. I hope that you heard all of the comments and we appreciate you listening in. And we'll see everyone next Tuesday. Yeah.